just going to finish those little gestures and go and take you into the barn to see Susanna's exhibition. Here we've been um, not so lucky with the weather this morning but that's okay. This is a really old place and I'm hoping to hear a little bit of the history in a minute. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, so nice to see you. This is Susanna. Hello. Here she hello. is. This is my <laughs> at Samuel Farm in the big barn. Okay. Um, I, it's taken me a couple of days to hang this show and um, if you've ever put a, an exhibition up yourselves you'll know it's quite a lot of work but I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out so and I'm so happy to have Gail here and um, oh, to be able to share my, the show with you. My pleasure I'm thinking maybe you could show us well. Yes I'd love to. Agreeable it's to a me. constant hubbub in here so um, I will just let let Susie thank you say goodbye to her visitors she's been inundated it's been absolutely wonderful. Uh, we were interrupted because not only is this a, an exhibition but a whole load of kids um, have come to do donkey rides so the pull of this exhibition was come to the countryside, bring a picnic, look at my paintings from the last 18 months and have a donkey ride so that's one way of doing an exhibition. Oh, we may get a few more donkey ride um, applicants. Anyway we're going to start um, from yes. the beginning. I'll follow you. Yes. Right. Okay. So this is a beautiful for Big Barn. It's perfect for an exhibition because we have lovely high ceilings, wonderful light and great big doors open to welcome those who've been able to come in person or remotely. So welcome. On this side of the wall, I have a lot of rooftop paintings that I did from my roof in Clapham over that first lockdown. You'll remember we had amazing sunny weather and so it was just perfect for being up high and taking it all in. Um, this is my actual house. Um, my son's bedroom is underneath this bit of rooftop. I liked, I really wanted to paint this one really, really big to, to, to get that weighty, that weighty feel of the um, chimney stack and the pots. And, and also, um, looking out from my rooftop, I could see all the individual stacks and pots and I thought of them as being like little communities, all isolated, just like we were underneath the roofs of our houses, all nestled together in London. And so there we are, we're starting in my home, my rooftop, and then we're looking out onto the neighbouring houses and their rooftops. Here is a nighttime view of the sun going down over Chelsea, again, from my rooftop. And this is my neighbouring, um, on the neighbouring streets, there's, there's two tower blocks. I was very conscious of the fact that I was in a house and that these, um, these neighbours were in tower blocks. I was concerned for how they were, and I was very much thinking of them and painting and just making a connection with them. Yeah. I really would love to meet the people living there and I'd like to go into their tower blocks and paint my view from there. So I'm still working on that. That's amazing. And that view incorporates Battersea Tower Station That's well, right. That, there's the Battersea Power Station yeah. just here. Um, this is one of my okay. Oh, I love these. Yes, just yeah. little highlighting the cranes that, are, that were working and, and a lot of them stopped work for some weeks because of obviously, um, you know, everyone had to go home. And so it's this strange feeling. And also, in, normally in these skies, there's an aeroplane that goes past every minute and it's quite noisy. Of course, there were no planes. So suddenly it was quiet. You can hear the birds and yes. get a sense yes. of nature. Yes. Again, um, so a lot of these add up. So this, this wall here in fact becomes this wall here so it's that same view continuation um, and, and we've got more cranes and this is called Nine Elms it's a new development that they've just built up along the River Thames getting towards Vauxhall and then this again th these these little roof um, top chimney pots here are the same echoed there and, and so then you've got this this near community in juxtaposition with the skyscrapers far away and that part of town was so quiet. Normally there's lots of lights on at, at night, but because people weren't going into work, that was dark at night. It's extraordinary. Um, Susie, were these paint, they look as though they were perhaps painted at the same time of day. Yes. It looks like a lovely, warm, that's strong, right. low light. That's right. So this is, you're absolutely right, strong low light, and that's because it was in the morning. I'd get up really early in the morning, before my children had woken up and I would paint and you know just try and get something done sometimes by 10 a.m. I'd finished a picture so you feel like 
you really started the day. I, I love getting up early. I like the quiet. I've got four children. It's a busy house. And so for me, to get working was, was really important. Um, and then, yeah, by 10, I'd feel like, oh, cup of tea, you know, and then head out again and do something else. But as it got more into the middle of the day, it got hotter. So the, the early morning was, was great. So this is, that face is east. So that's why we've got the shadows on the left, sun kind of rising up. And then this is the sun higher in the sky, the shadows, fall, yeah. Um, in fact, this probably come right up high and it's starting, to the end, starting towards the afternoon because we've got the shadows coming on this side. So it's gone up to the top and it's coming down in the, the west. So you just rotate round, do you, yes. on your rooftop? Yes, you yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and, then, and then this, this line of houses ends up here. And I really enjoyed this particular painting because I thought I'd got the heat in the pots at the top. They this really is catch the eye with that just going on. And, and then yeah. sort of the warmth in the shadows, I was really pleased to be able to, to get. This is really shown beautifully by the light in this barn. Yes. It's almost pearlescent. That sky is incredible. I hope it comes across on the camera. Thank you. And then further through there is Canary Wharf, which is really miles away from my home. But I could just see the twinkling light on the top of that. It's like a pyramid structure in Canary Wharf. Yes. Gorgeous. This is one of my husband's favorite paintings. He loves that whole um, combination of, of the nearby pots and then the skyscrapers farther away. This is a very wonky building in Elephant and Castle. It is actually like that. Um, and this is, I forget the name of the tower, but um, a well-known tower in Vauxhall. Uh, this is the American embassy here. It looks, I've always think, I think it looks a little bit like bubble wrap, the yeah. side of it. Do you know what I mean? Or a whole lid of champagne glasses and covered in plastic. Uh, and, th and this is a si similar yeah. view. I love the sense of the planes, the, fo the foreground and the, and the distance. Yes. The different worlds. Yes, yeah. yes. I think what was so fascinating for me was to stand on my, on my rooftop and to see different compositions jumping out at me. So the more I looked, the more I saw. And suddenly I'd think, oh, wow, the way that this pot works and then so for example the square painting that I've got here yeah. um, this just suddenly jumped out at me that you've got this an interesting play of structures weaving through to the to the to the distance yeah. do you see what I mean there's sort yeah. of the Z going on yeah. and then that strong shadow I did a painting a little bit larger than this and with the same idea in mind and I submitted it to the landscape artist of the year um, sort of where you've got to sort of submit to try and yeah. get a place and it, it won me a place in a pod um, which was really really exciting Absolutely. Um, yeah. so amazing that my rooftop would then end up with me trying you know being on a competition on the on the television yeah. it's a really wonderful experience and I think everyone should have a go you should <laughs> submit your work have a go um, and so now on the other side in the middle of the room up, yes I'm going to take you follow? this is this is very very different this is um the, the, having gone from the urban, very much man-made rooftop structures, we're now going to, the, to, to a natural um, feel of Stampwell Farm, where we are today. The barn is situated in this lovely farm with, with plum orchards and cherry tree orchards. So here I am in the spring of this year, 2021, painting these ancient plum orchards and the, hear, just hearing the buzz of the bees, overwhelming, and the smell of the blossom was just so perfect for that time when I just desperately wanted to get out of London, get some fresh air and just some space to be on my own. And I just bathed myself in the light and in the colour and um, yeah, it was wonderful. So I, so I came back day after day and did these large, I wanted to paint really big so I could really immerse myself in the space. Having now been to the farm, they really evoke. The yes, oh, I'm really, really glad, so yeah. glad you can get that whole experience yes, of being here. Yeah. Um, so just, there's a, there's a real sort of subtlety of brush strokes and just and, and also with with plum blossom it's tiny flowers when it's out it's a shame it's not you can't see it here now. but you really have to get a sense of the blossom rather than each flower you get a sense of the way that the light's coming through so that was that was a challenge but yet something which I, I really enjoyed doing I'd painted cherry trees in the past which have got much bigger um, sort of blossom heads whereas this is so fine you just got to get a feel for it I love the way you've captured the bulk without making them look heavy. Mm -hmm. This is, is so beautiful. Yeah. I Thank really you. Love, and I love your buttery paint. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, linseed oil, poppy seed oil. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, poppy seed oil is very good. Mm -hmm. Poppy seed oil. Poppy seed oil, yeah. 
Um, that's okay. And then some, 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 some are painted with thicker paint than others. This is quite thinly painted. Um, this, is, this is really quite thick. I, 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 sort of, I was experimenting, got, a, got my palette knife out and mixed up lots of colors and then tried it and then scraped bits off and, until you get what you want. Standing in the same place and painting for a length of time, obviously the light changes and therefore what you want to convey can change. And you can change your mind halfway through a painting. Oh, actually, I quite like it like that, you know, trying to get it to work. Yes. So that's the beauty of oil, isn't that it? That is the beauty of oil. Those chickens, is that apple and avery? Yes, they are apple I've and avery. Have you? I have enjoyed meeting Oh, them. great. This is utterly them. Yes. Two brush strokes. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, then, and then, yes, and then, and then we moved around to, um, whilst I was here in the spring, the flock of sheep were all heavily pregnant and it was hot and they were just sitting still in the field and it was lovely for me because I could then paint them and as you know because you've been painting livestock yeah. as well yeah. you've got to get it quite quickly yeah. otherwise they move on and just yeah so wow, you've really nailed them, so those lovely uh, full bellies as well you've got just caught the way the sun hits them thank you I call yeah. it pastures green because I you know green comes in very different shades and I was again I was experimenting with how I could get that to work yes yeah yes. Yes, it is, yeah. With, and then the warm light on the sheet. Yes. Thank you. Trying to get that distance as well with the, those um, some trees. Here, which right. Is here we go. Skin no, no, exactly. So, it's not yes. yes. This was really fun. I was on, on the roof again, which we've been talking about, and with a head torch on. And until the battery ran out, this is about as much work I could do. Oh <laughs> so, yeah, but it's really fun, you know, just trying to get, get out and paint in the dark because other things jump out at you and different colours come out. Also, when you're looking at your palette, you can paint tonally um, and mix colours that you think are what they are. And then when you get into natural, when you get into artificial light down in your yeah, house again, yeah. it completely surprises you. You think, oh my gosh, I put a red there. But oh, actually, it works. It's yeah. really nice. I like that. It really you know, that, that is what it's like. When yeah. you're looking at it, you can't always tell the no. hue no. so much. Yeah. yeah, so we've got all sorts of greens and blues. and dark. I, I like to use a Prussian blue sometimes if I'm doing this sort of yeah. thing. Um, and then, of course, these are the skylights of the houses. Um, it was quite funny painting in the dark because I could hear people's conversations. It's very silent. It's extraordinary how, how noise travels. Yeah. Um, I couldn't exactly make out what they were saying, but it's like, gosh, the I, murmur of the murmur, people, in there. yeah. Was that, in lockdown as well? that was in lockdown as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they, they, all of these were in, in lockdown. Um, the, the first lockdown. This is on the other side of my home. This is very poignant because it's an empty street. Of course, no one was going out. We were all stuck in our houses, and so it's just taking in that. Oh, the lack of traffic. The lack of traffic. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's normally what would be normally quite a busy street was yeah. silent. And those skies presumably would have been... And, and they would have been yeah. full of, of aeroplanes and, you know, a lot of activity because there was nothing going on. Yeah. So it's because that stillness. But I, I, I really like that stillness. <laughs> Although I love living in a busy city. This is early spring. There's no leaves on this particular tree. This is a horse chestnut tree, which I now know because I was observing it. That comes out first or very early. You get more growth on, the, on those early. It's lovely um, what you learn. It's it is, I know. It's by really being in a place and yeah. watching what you learn about what you would otherwise just glimpse. And, That's true. Yes. Taking time, taking stock yeah. and observing. Yeah. yeah. It's very, very enriching. So this is the same house, but in where, where this is the morning light, this yes. is the afternoon light. So you can see that difference here. Yes. And I yes. really enjoyed and I like reflecting on this painting. I really love these colours that come through the windows. I'm not quite sure how it did, but you've got that sort of glow, even though it's in the shade. Sometimes yes. when you're painting, yes. because I paint outside from life like you do, you know, you, you get so many new um, colours and exciting things come out and then you can capture them in paint. And when you manage to do it, it's so rewarding to yes. come away and think, ooh, yes. brilliant. And that each yes. painting's going to inform the next one. So it's so worth painting outside. As you know, yeah. and yeah, and in front squinting? of them. Did you have to squint? Oh, you again? do have to squint. Have to yes. Spot on. Yes, <laughs> I know. Um, you do, and, and then trying to get what colours. And of course, you've got to paint it all so quickly because the light's going to change. So it's, there's, there's this race against time element as well, which is exciting. Yes. So you don't. When you bring them in, do you fiddle? Or no, you no, I didn't fiddle. No, mostly yeah. I don't fiddle. 
Um, but what, when I do fiddlets, because I want to put a chicken in, or oh, see, I think the chicken I did there, but if I want to put a person into something, I often let things dry, and then I'll put a person in later. But that's, it just depends on the painting. Yeah, there's no real rule to it. Um, and this was a very kind invitation by a friend who lives in Battersea, and she has access to a lovely rooftop. Um, and so for the third lockdown, I went on her, on, on her terrace. It's a, it's, a, it's a building much higher than these rooftops, one of the children that's come to visit today was saying how they felt this looked like waves of the sea. Um, and I thought that's interesting because it is a little bit like that, all these, you know, these, these sort of um, parallel streets of all these families. And this here is a school it's up on the hill. Uh, one of the paintings I've called It Takes a Village because I feel like it does take a village, you know, to raise our children. And just thinking about all the communities and the people and the schools and how we all look out for each other's kids or, you know, just that that's a lovely... Um, it's a wonderful thing, actually, living in a busy space because there are lots of people who can yeah. create community for us, and, and what a blessing that is. You've managed to capture that without actually having any people. In no, we are. You said you, just the marks of the people, isn't it? They're, yeah. Their places. Yeah. 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 Lovely rhythm. At home. Really. Yeah. So that's a, that's an evening light, and we've got the sort of the sun's about to come down, and, and then the shadows on that side. And I've done a, a, a smaller study. Yes, okay. And so this is the same view, but a smaller study in, in a slightly sort of flat light. So you don't get much contrast, but you get a richness to the colours and, the, and, the, and the, the contrast, or the sort of the, the, the oranges and blues, which work very well together, sort of metallic feel. Yeah, they really pop and beautifully framed as well. I have a fantastic framer. She's really, really clever. Yeah. Um, and so here is, um, again, this is certainly going back, this, this is from my rooftop early spring, next door neighbours, um, the, 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 the shadow of the trees next to the building, but yet not actually the trees. It's quite fun to suggest things. Yeah. So you don't need all the information, but just something so you can get a feel for that atmosphere. So very early spring and lovely spring skies. And, um, Gorgeous. Yeah. The way they zigzag as well up in yes. the heavens. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And certain times of year before you've got the leaves on the trees, you can see much more... Um, of the um, buildings in the distance, which then get, um, you know, the, obscured by the leaves later on. So it's fun to sort of see, oh, gosh, I can actually see that, or, you know, church buildings, or it might be. Can I ask you a technical Yes, you can. So I, something I'm really interested in, weirdly, is, is these, when you're painting sky, yes. and, and like background, I love it when it looks as though you've painted them after the foreground and you've cut in. Is this, what's your, do you yes. have a, like an order? That ah. you do because I know yes. you're very experienced and you've obviously okay. done this. Yes. Do you have a well that's really perceptive of you and when I'm just thinking about it, yes, I would think about doing the structures first and then doing the sky afterwards. I would do would that. Yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. And you can see you can I think you can make that out. So that so I wouldn't have put I wouldn't have put sky in and then the and then the pots on top. I would have just done the pots yeah. and then and then done the sky afterwards. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. Yeah. It's just such a lovely uh, that, that sort of I don't know, always Tuscan like to me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and, and then also, it's quite good too when you're thinking about skies to paint. Think about your, dress, your brush strokes, particularly on the horizon line. I like to, to do brush strokes sort of up and down like that. And then I might, and then I might do clouds a little bit more um, with horizontal lines. But it, it's, I think it takes you away if you've got that sort of haze against the horizon. Yeah. So you'll see that's what I've done there. Subconsciously, but that, that is what I end up doing. You, you get a method in your mind of how you do it. <laughs> um, and so, yes, here we go. This, I, did a, a, I did a slow motion sort of catch up um, thing on my Instagram of, of the process of how to do this painting. Um, I'd have to look that up to show you what it was. But, yeah. It really, the, this is another, um, you know, three worlds. Isn't it? Yes. It feels like. A, you've got the leaves yeah. in front, and then yeah. you've got the buildings there, and then you've got the, the, the background. Um, I couldn't tell you what order I've done them all in, but <laughs> I think I can safely say that the tree went in last, because I can yes. see that I put that, yes. right, and, yes. and I would have done the buildings first. Yes. To, you to, had a plan in your head? I had a plan in my head to, to have that building and have the distance and the skies, and I wanted the leaves, but I, I needed to get as much of the structure. I would have actually put quite a lot of the building in, but then painted the tree on top, but not in much detail, just to get the right colours to come through from behind. Because you can see purples coming through and a little bit of orange. There's, there's, a, there's a quite a large, um, I think it's, it's like a chapel there behind those trees to go with this one, which is converted into a pottery studio.
Yeah. I know the building. We look down on it from the, from our from our yeah. house. It's it's quite immediate. Oh yes, there is some trumpet playing. <laughs> Dad and daughter, <laughs> yes, both of them. they oh, do, okay. yes, yes. yes. Well, you um, different time, different time, <laughs> different time. But over the lockdown, they've played. We'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when. And the neighbours actually quite liked it, so yes. that was okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's appreciated. Nice yes, yeah. <laughs> Come on, it was a really important occasion, but I can't think what it was. Wow. Um, and so, yes, this is from that friend's terrace in Battersea, and I like these. These, these to me feel like little soldiers all lined up in a row. Yeah. with the sunlight, um, evening light coming down on them, and uh, St. Luke's Church there. Just, and it's, I just love all this sort of, these different shapes, and then how the light affects them, and thinking again about who lives there, and just that sense of community and yeah. togetherness. Yeah. 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 This is a lovely pair. Did you paint them? And I did, I a, did. Well, I painted them, I think, one after the other, whether it was the same. Sometimes I would paint two in a day, or one day after another, but... Um, I think that these are two separate days because they're both the same time, roughly the same time of day. So I wouldn't have done it that quickly. Right. So then, to take you to something completely different, we've done the urban, we've done this, the, the, you know, the, the cityscape, we've done this lovely relaxing landscape. Now I want you to dream of where you could go this summer. Now we're not in lockdown anymore. We can get out, you know, and um, and so I. Yes, I want to take you to Cornwall first. And, and I, yes, I want to take you to a place called, people call it Mousel or Mouse Hole in Cornwall. Yes, yes. And when I went there earlier this year, for the first time in a long, long time, I thought, where do I start? There's so much to paint by the sea in Cornwall. And I thought, well, actually, I've got this whole new way of painting, which is to get up high and to look down, the whole rooftop thing. Yes. So I thought, that's what I'll do. I'll go up as high as I can in Mousel and I'll paint from above. So that's why we've got here these rooftop views, looking down to the gap in the harbour and across to the islands beyond. And it, I just, I really enjoy being up high looking down. Maybe it's a bit like being on a ship and looking out to yeah. sea with everything in front of you. There's that feeling of freedom and space, which you can get if you get up high. If you're feeling claustrophobic, just get up high and look out and then you'll feel that you're in control. Yes. <laughs> Something like so that. Were you on a roof? Were you I wasn't. I, was, I, I, had to, I, I wanted to get into a garden and they were all privately owned. And I was trying so hard to try and get permission to go in someone's garden. And finally, I saw some people drinking coffee in this garden by a shed. And I said, well, hello. Can I, you know, is it possible? Can I? And they said, you know, help yourself. We're going to be going away and we don't live here. It's a holiday home. So just, you know, paint in our garden whenever you like. So it's worth asking. If you don't ask, you don't get. Well, so here daughter and I have been admiring these dogs. Oh, and yes. your dog, you know, your, your understanding of dogs is fantastic they look they they are so convincing they do that and so simple are these familiar dogs? yes they are yeah. one is my dog and one is her little hello darling hello. this is my daughter Flora. We're, you're on live you're on a live facebook here we're doing a live of my exhibition hello. yeah okay. you can say hello if you want yeah. do you know these dogs yes you want to say that's who these that's dogs are so that's <laughs> milo and rosie milo and rosie milo and rosie yeah, yeah. and which is which is which? So, so that's Milo with the blue collar, and then that's Rosie. Yeah, they look very happy looking out to sea. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then it's quite likely that you might be sailing on one of those boats or one of your friends. Well, probably. I, no, I think I'll be that one. Oh, are they talking? Are they talking? Yes. Oh, yes. I love it. But that looks like an oppie. I think that looks like an oppie. Optimist and I think that's mine. Yeah. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, so I, so I just stood on the side of the quay and painted the children as they were racing along and the dogs yeah. looking out to sea. It's good, fun holiday, ex you know. Yes. Well, Trips. maybe you can paint as well. Can you paint? As, are you a painter I, I, as I well love, as the same? I like, I like oh, painting. Fantastic. <laughs> you fancy holding the camera? Hold it nice and still. See if you can hold it. Fantastic. Okay, so we've got we've been to Cornwall, we've been to Mousel, and now we're going to go to a place called Albert in Suffolk, which has a long pebble beach, and I stayed um, in a really high up lookout for the lifeboatmen, um, and painted this this view out to um, out to sea and down this long path that's called the wall where everyone has fish and chips at the end of the day. This yeah. one really jumped out at me okay. for, have, for the lack of um, such a strong tonal contrast yes. for you. This yes. is a, a, quite a, a muted yes. uh, tonal value. Is yes. that because of the light or the, so what I was doing, your mood? Yeah, but it was my mood. But what I was doing for this, this was yeah. in the run-up to going on the television programme. And I was trying yes. to try out different things. Right. And so palette knife, paring it back, trying to get an atmosphere. But yes, it, it, is, it is very 
um, sort of loose and um, luminous yes. Um, yes. and a little bit sort of almost foggy in its way. Um, not sure if that's the right description, but can I, can I borrow the camera? Yeah. So, so you've got some palette knife work and, and sort of cutting in and some brush marks. Just, yeah, anyway. It was, it's, often so it's, it's good to experiment. experiment. It was quite experimental. Yeah. Very effective, though. Thank very you. Thank you. And this, can we just do the yes. seagull? Yes, yes, yeah, and the, the seagull. seagull. Oh, was mm -hmm. that an afterthought? This was an afterthought. Yeah. This was an afterthought. I did, I did I, there's a little lady on a bench, and it's called, it's called Duck, Duck Street in Mausel in Cornwall. Yeah. Um, and it had everything apart from the seagull, and I just thought it needed something to lead us down yeah. to the quay and the little harbour, and the harbour wall and the little sort of life-saving ring there and then out to sea and actually I'd, when I was there I like to take photographs whilst I'm painting and I did take a photograph of a seagull up here and then down on the floor and sit and and um flying across yeah. and I just thought I, perhaps it was perhaps that one was slightly over here but I sort of just moved it and put it in a position I thought that I felt would work as in the I composition think that, it absolutely does it um, absolutely does and that's quite a bold seagull you it is for a little, no like they are massive no, no, they're not like that, no, they're they are huge. Yeah. They are brilliant at nicking chips and fish, um, you know, <laughs> from your takeaways. So, but, but quite majestic in their own way, and I, I thought it worked really well there. Having the light on its wings as well brought a bit of yes, sunshine violet, into it. Yeah. 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 So good to play around. This is quite different. This is actually in um, this is in Brittany, a place called Belle Isle. This is some years ago, maybe two or three years ago. And just interestingly, at that point in time, I'd gone up high and I'd painted looking down on a rooftop and a harbour. So it's obviously a sea, you know, all these things yeah. in the back of my mind and thinking, oh, I like that. I'd like to try that. And it's amazing looking back to see where I am now and how I got there yeah. and little points along the way that have informed me as into what I'm doing now. Lovely. So this is an yeah. early indicator of future, yes. future travel for you. Exactly. In, in an artistic yes. journey. Yes. Yeah. And then, then we're not up high anymore. We're down in the harbour of Mausel. Had to do some boats when you're there, you know, why not? Um, early morning, light coming through that. They call it the gap. Beautiful vertical brush strokes there. Yes. Coming it... down through. Thank you. Yeah. And then we've got that going on in the sky as well. And what's that in the distance? So that is actually St. Michael's Mount. Right. Mar Mar Marazian. I can't remember, I'm not sure how you say it, but it's this lovely yeah. bay. Yes. Yeah. And here is, if you're, if you're into surfing, which I can't surf, but I, this is a really popular beach in Cornwall called Sennan Cove, very close to Mausel. So I was painting this whilst my friends were surfing, which is quite a fun thing to do. That's um, quite a moody atmosphere on those levels. Was it yes. weather? It was, it was very windy. Yeah. Good for surfing. Good for yeah. surfing. So they were happy. And it's quite hard to keep my, you know, keep my hair in one place, let alone the actual easel from blowing over. Top tips? Yeah, top, tips. top tips. Um, for what to do? Keeping your hair and easel. Wear a, wear, a, wear a hat, which doesn't blow off, and stick your hair out the little hole at the back. But even that, even on this day, it blew off. Um, so, <laughs> that, so, that was dedicated. That was ugh. Yeah. But, um, no, I'd, I'd like to encourage people, you know, even if you think, oh, it's going to be cold or wet or lots of people with you, just take your paints. If you're going to go somewhere, don't leave your paints behind because you'll regret it. So on this day, it was great to take my paints and just make the most of it, have a go. And I did a painting I really liked. Yes. Yeah. It's wonderful. And it's yes. got so much energy to it, hasn't yes. it? So I think the sense of that blusteriness has come across. Mm. I was experimenting too with colours here, um, with sort of translucent colours and opaque colours, and thinking about the opacity of these greens, which are closer to you than the, than the sort of greens further away. So th there, was, there was a lot of thought going on in my mind as to how I was going to convey this using my different colours. This is very different. This is during the second lockdown. I didn't want to be in my house anymore, and I wanted to just travel around locally. So I fixed my mind on this local church, which has a clock tower, a bell tower, that catches the light in the most extraordinary way. It really is like a beacon. Sometimes, say that, sometimes people say that this church is a bit like a lighthouse shining out in the community. It's on the middle of Clapham Common. It's quite an amazing structure. And I painted it at dawn after it had been snowing the day before. So we've got a snowman here. We've got the artificial light of the um, sort of floodlit church coming up. And then we've got the natural light of the day just starting, not quite dawn. And it's a lovely glow that, that happens um, in, the, in the sky. But often when it's just snowed, you get 
this slightly pinky sky, yes. which, uh, which this was when it had snowed and, and, and had started to melt, but you've still got this sort of pink aura, pinky yellowy aura in yes. the sky. Yes, that lovely waffly warm. Exactly. Yeah. So this was painted first, and that was painted either the next day or the day after. So you've got very, very different times of day, but, yeah. but just that sense and that feeling that you get in that weather. And then here, um, I've done, just homed in on the clock tower, and in this one, I decided to go even closer underneath it, looking up through the trees to depict the spring, because, of course, there aren't any leaves on those branches. That's amazing. This was um, one of our favourites. Ah. Lizzie and I were coming round. It really caught, I, it just caught my eye already. And yeah. It's so lovely. It's so different to see them in the flesh. Mm. I know it's great on the grid, but in real life, they're a hundred times better. It's just so, so did you, when seeing them in real life, how big from the Instagram feed did you feel they were? Bigger, bigger. bigger, yes. These ones I thought were bigger. Yes. And I've been really, so what we're coming to okay. was uh, a surprise of the other direction. But yeah, I mean, okay. you've actually packed a lot in, haven't yes. you? Yes. Into the a little 10 by yeah. 8 um, oil yes. on board. Yeah. Absolutely luscious, though. Mm. But it's in, cake. yes, uh, <laughs> but, but it, it, is, it is good to think, in, I, I, I sort of challenging myself thinking, actually, it'd be really lovely to work really big. Sometimes it's a good sort of way of releasing yeah. yourself into trying something new is to actually take a bigger board take a lot more paint bigger brushes and do the same yes. but on a bigger scale so that's what i did here talking of which, talking of which <laughs> um i got this 30 inch by 30 inch canvas uh, set it up in the orchard i had to put some i had to put a big blanket behind it because the sun was coming through the the linen canvas it can sometimes get in the way if you've got the sun coming through so i didn't get sort of shadows from behind and um this is, yeah, this, these are plum trees. It's early spring. The blossoms are out. There's a real glow looking through. I was thinking about Van Gogh at the time when I was painting this. I was thinking about his tree orchards, somewhere in the back of my mind where I've been inspired by his work. Um, and just in simplifying the shapes of, the, the, of the, 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 um, the tree trunks and the branches and just getting an overall sense and feel, not wanting to do every little branch, every little twig, but just get the overall sense of what you're looking at yeah. and bring, getting that to come across. It's quite sketchy, it's very big, big brushes. There's possibly a sort of an unfinished feel to it, but I like it like yes. that. Yes. I wanted to leave it is like that. Is that the toned canvas? This there. is the toned yes. canvas yes. here. Yes. Um, oh. But I think sometimes that can be really effective because it, 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 it's not tight as a painting, it's loose. Yes. It invites you in, it draws you in and you can relax. Whereas something's really tight, it can feel a bit uh, and suffocating, whereas with this, you're just, ah, oh, it's a sense of some fresh air, lovely in a room. You know, it might work really well in someone's drawing room or I'm something. Sure it would, peaceful yeah. space. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, very compatible colours yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Gently done. Yeah. I, I, I love the way you can mentally walk through those trees as well. I feel as though I know what it would feel like to go underneath them. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and how did you find it painting big? I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I realised I had to paint really fast, as I do with at any other time, but yet. That it's, you're very conscious to paint even faster because you've got to cover that canvas and you've got to find the right colours. It's tempting to get it stuck into little greys and just everything about you. No, 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 come on, mix up more paint rather than just a little bit and let's put it on in lots of different areas. Let's um, squeeze your eyes together and really look at the tonal differences and put it down. Stop, you know, don't dilly dally, just get, get going and put it down. Yeah. yeah. It is a very, is it, yeah, it's a discipline. <laughs> it is, yes. And you've got to really focus. You can't get um, distracted and into thinking other things. You've really got to just focus on that painting and get as much down as you can. So I want to, so there's, I've put up a few um, sort of lockdown. Yeah. Um, yes. Does, yes. I think it was somebody's birthday over lockdown. And Julie Dunstan. Julie Dunstan. Dunstan. This yeah, is Julie Dunstan. Yeah. Yes. And she said, paint a candle, everyone paint a candle, and then post it on Instagram. And I thought, oh, that's an interesting thought. So I had a go, and I really enjoyed it. So thank you, Judy. Yes, yes, it really is lovely. Well, yeah. I, I made, made, made me laugh when I saw that. When yes, I, was looking around. I should have yeah. called it Julie's candle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love snowdrops. So it was my birthday. I wanted snowdrops, Aww. so I did some snowdrops and got my family to all give me a snowdrop picture that they do, whether they liked it or not. So the very last uh, paintings I want to show you are the very. This is the very first. Lockdown painting from my roof. I've called it a momentous moment because it was a momentous moment standing on my roof, painting from life, this view. And it's a, it, you know, we've got this nine arms of cranes, the um, tower blocks, 
the, the chimney pots, you've got Battersea Power Station, so, so it takes it all in. It's, quick, it's a very quick painting. There's a luminosity to that shade, to, to the shadows of that tower. Um, it, uh, for me, it's finished because it's taking in that time, but it's quite sort of sketchily, yeah. sort of painterly done. But I, it, was, it was the start of something new, and that's what led me on to doing all those other roofscapes. So the first thing I saw was this, and then I saw other detail. So it's important to reflect back and think, you know, where do we start and where are we going and what are, the, what are those starting points? And then here, I'd say, is the last painting that I've done of my rooftop, from my rooftop. Um, it was when we had that snow earlier on this year, quite surprising snow. I can't remember if it was in sort of March or April. And I challenged myself to paint in the snow. I had an umbrella attached to my, to my easel. And then, you know, the hardest thing for me was this. It, it wasn't just snowflakes, but it was really thick. And it, would, it, it came on my palette and it, all in my painting box. And I was scraping off the snow and chucking it on the floor and trying to, trying to work out what was paint, what was snow, to make sure I put the right thing on. But what I like about it is this foggy haze. I know full well what those buildings are. I've painted them many, many times, but they were disappearing in, in the fog. And I, I really, I love that. Just the change, seeing it in another light, yet another different light than I had done before. So we've got beginning and ending. And I thank you very much for joining us, if you join this whole thing. Well, Susie, thank you so much. I'm really, really grateful. I'm really happy. I'm going to put the camera. Okay. Where can I put it? On I'm here? put it over here, and then we can finish this. There we are. Very unflattering angle up our, up our noses. <laughs> I wish you could actually be here to see because it really is something else seeing in real life. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, it's just I lovely that by taking you around the exhibition, you're inspired to have a go at painting yourself. Um, and, and just give it a go. If you've, if you've often thought, oh, I'd love to do that, then just give it a go. Um, we have so much pleasure, both of us. Gail, too, is a really accomplished artist, and I'm very inspired by the work that I see oh, on your Instagram feed. Thank you. And I'm thank just you. so well, blessed to have you here. Oh, well, it's thank lovely to meet you in real life. Thank you. Right, I'm going to go and have a look around the farm. Okay. Thank you, Susie. Yeah.